Vern Benham Grimsley on campus. The two great commandments he gave in Mark chapter 12 were, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when this new love begins to dominate your life, there's a joy in it then. And then you'll be certain about it, and you'll have power over drugs and over anything that binds you. Well, how, how would I get this feeling? What would I do to do? What would I do? The first thing you would have to do is, this is what I did, see. I went home, I got down on my knees, and I said, Lord. I swear to God, I, oh, I'm sorry. I do that all the time. Like, I, I really pray. Which, do you really be sincere? I, I sure do. Well, see, this is what you do. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. Yeah. Take I tell him that every day. I tell him to do that every day. I know, all right. That's the way. I mean, that's exactly what you're supposed that's to do. That's it. And then have faith. That's the choice. It's the choice to accept the love and forgiveness of God. And if you'll only accept it, you see, then you can know the joy of living as a daughter of God. And it's a thrill. Oh, I understand now. Just accept it. Well, remember that God is a father, that he's infinitely loving, and you're infinitely valuable, that God knows every hair on your head. And every thought in your mind, every cavity in your teeth, and he loves you, right? I mean, his mercy endures forever. That's how loving God is, and if you can just dare to believe that and live that way by faith every day and accept this infinite love of God, there's new power in that. Yeah, okay, I can, all right, I understand that. Well, I can do that, all right, I'll do that. If you can dare to believe, really with faith, that you're a daughter of God, you know, this instant that God loves you infinitely, and that God knows everything that's going on inside your mind, that God has forgiveness and mercy for you, and that you're a daughter of the Father, and He has power for your life, believe that, then life really becomes new. And then go out and begin to live in this new way. Live by that faith, act on that faith, and life is a joy. Yeah. Great, great. <laughs> there she goes. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's beautiful, man. <laughs> that is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, uh, I know what she's talking about, because like uh, two years ago, I was strung out on all these drugs. She said she'd been on everything from heroin to cocaine to LSD, and she said now she's had this rebirth of faith right here on this broadcast. Well, see, like, uh, I've never uh, been strung out on nothing like that. I never went as far as marijuana and reds and things like that. But uh, as soon as I asked the Lord to come into my life, this changed it. Everything was changed. I felt the Holy Ghost. I mean, everything's been different all, since then. I mean, you know, there's a joy in finding God. No, it is. It is. I mean, if people would just wake up and realize that, you know, if people would just accept that fact, you know. and they Accept can, the fact that God loves them infinitely. Really? If they can accept that fact, then <laughs> they have a complete joy and happy life with God. My conviction is that's going to make a difference in this world, too. I mean, here you are black and I'm white. I believe people of all races can get along if they have this divine love of God in their lives. I do too. See, like, yeah. uh, there's no prejudice within me, you know. I mean, once God comes in your life, I mean, you see every man as one, you know. Uh -huh. As just one individual. And not a uh, uh, color of skin, you know, of what breed or what uh, culture you are. You know, it doesn't make any difference. All members in the family of God, as brothers. As brothers and sisters. That's beautiful. No. You don't think religion is valuable? <laughs> no. No, I do not. Why would you say you don't? I think religion is an opiate used to deceive the masses, so tell, uh, to tell them that they'll get a pie in the sky if they're good, if they don't uh, fight for social justice and self-determination now by any means necessary. People uh, who believe that everything's going to be cool when they uh, go to heaven aren't going to pick up the gun uh, for their freedom here. Well, I question whether people ought to pick up their gun. Jesus said those who live by the sword will die by the sword. I think violence only breeds more violence. If a person is good, do you agree with that? Okay, I think I think you should tell that to uh, um, the, the state's attorney. It's as if a little boy swallowed an ant and people decided they were going to cure it by giving him some ant powder. <laughs> Or a child inhaled an insect, so you give him some insect spray. The cure is worse than what was wrong originally. And I think to try to cure violence with more violence is self-defeating. I believe we have to live as brothers in one family, the family of God on this earth. And I do believe religion is relevant. And I furthermore do not think that believing in pie in the sky after one dies, that is to say eternal life, means that a person can't improve the earth because believing in pie in the sky doesn't mean you can't build a bakery down here. The drug scene itself, just by virtue of their using drugs to find spiritual insight. Uh, I worked in a mental hospital. We got the worst cases of the drug of the drug cases, and uh, they say no, that's not the way out. Once tried to commit suicide 27 times. 
He You're loved drugs, but he doesn't know what to do with himself now. He can't handle the situation. You're finding that when young people find God, they find a new liberation from their drug addiction in that mental hospital as you were working there? Absolutely. Those that really, they can use Christ as a crutch. And they say, we're going to give my life to Jesus. And okay, Jesus, and uh, Jesus doesn't happen. And uh, they say, Jesus doesn't exist. And uh, it's getting to the point now of where it's a do-or-die thing. And uh, if a person doesn't find God, some of them literally are going to die. From overdoses, you mean? Overdoses, revolution like the fellow that was just here. Do you think it's possible to have the brotherhood of man and real peace on earth without the fatherhood of God, without people turning to a divine source of love? I think it isn't. No. <laughs> we agree. God has done so many wonders for my life. I, I went through a long period of, say, mental troubles or emotional, emotional disturbances. You personally had gone through a period of in a mental hospital? No, not, not through a mental hospital, but outside psychiatric care, and I couldn't get control of my life. And, I don't you know. found this by finding God? His word of forgiveness was enough just to cure all the turmoil and all the anxiety. To feel that you were forgiven, that you were infinitely loved, that God had mercy for you, literally liberated you from your fears, your anxieties, your guilt, and your mental problems? Right. That's right. beautiful, isn't it? Spot. <laughs> you recommend that, huh? Right. For anybody who has problems of this nature, who's, who's had emotional disturbances, the you're talking about spiritual psychiatry, living as a son of God. God, <laughs> it's the only way that you can really be cured. <laughs> yes. I re recommend it to anybody who has similar, who's gone through similar experiences. Uh -huh. It's the only, the only way really that you can get cured. I didn't think it was possible. I reached a state of, a mental state where I thought there was no way out. I was like hell of sorts, and I thought I couldn't get out. You know? There is a way out, up, huh? <laughs> right. Jesus is the way. <laughs> what did it feel like when you found this new birth in your life? It's a, it's a kind of freedom. It's a complete sense of freedom and a sense of, of peace. Uh -huh. And complete, you know, just a sense of inner peace and joy, you know, just uh -huh. and like all the worries are suddenly gone. And a sense of love almost. <laughs> How are you? I feel really nice. I feel so light now. I just feel like I'm floating away. <laughs> You're a daughter of God, huh? I guess so. You know it, huh? I feel like it. I feel like it. I really do. I feel happy all of a sudden. You know? You've found God. That's what's happening. Yeah, I feel really light. I guess God, I could jump up and down. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> you believed what I said about your being a daughter of God and God loving you, and that changed your life just now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. What do you think of that? Huh? Sort of what I went through. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? I went up there and prayed for. That's beautiful. Did you? Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. That's great. That's great. Well, the only thing I could say to God is my doctor and God is everything, man. You know, and it's for real. This is happening. But people, they're so concerned so much in the living in the materialistic life that it, they don't want to believe that God is real. God is, God is great in his life. And he's my doctor. And he's what make me work. And he's what make me live. And he's who give me life. Thank you, yes, Father. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, you think? No use for religion. I see. Huh? You have no use for God, you think? I don't believe in God. What do you think of the idea that God might have a use for you? I don't believe this is a God, so how can he have a use for me? <laughs> <laughs> really? Suppose you turned your back on that tree over there on campus and decided you didn't believe in it. Would that make the tree go away? Would it disappear? I could see the tree. I could uh -huh. touch the tree. Uh -huh. I could kick the tree and hurt my foot. You see what's going through the tree? The wind? What? Yeah. You say you see the wind? No, I don't see the wind, but you know the wind is there because the leaves are moving. That's what Jesus said to a man one time. You can look at a tree and see the wind going through it. You can't see the wind, but you see what it does. Neither can you see the Spirit of God, but I believe it is possible to feel in your life what that Spirit does, that it can change you. Does that make sense? Well, that makes sense, but I haven't felt anything, so I couldn't say that I believe in God. I'd be lying to you. My conviction is that by very simple faith, a person can find this experience, this great joy. I a lot of faith. I was brought up. I was brought up in a religious family. I just have no use for it. Yeah. I'm agnostic. You are welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. <laughs> what did you do for the young lady? <laughs> Helped her find God, and she says she's a new person now, and that can't happen to anybody. Oh. Well, I have no, I have no comment, actually. But you could tell she looks happier than when she... She looks pretty happy now. <laughs> she is pretty happy now. It's the greatest joy. Think it makes a difference in a person's life to believe in God? Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's where it's at. That's where it's at in a person's life. In fact, if it isn't in a person's life, he doesn't have it at all, huh? Right. <laughs> they just, you know, they've had it. Yeah.
I believe there's a spiritual renaissance coming on this earth that increasingly, I'm not talking about just getting people to join groups, but I mean in the sense of people seeking after the spiritual meaning for life, which I believe is there, seeking after God. Yeah, that's, uh, I agree with that myself, because I mean, like, there's a lot of people looking for God and they're trying to find it in wrong ways. What would be a wrong way, do you think, to try to find God? Dope. Uh -huh. <laughs> I recall reading a cartoon by Jules Pfeiffer, the Greenwich Village humorist. In this cartoon, it shows a fellow saying, I used to drink whiskey to solve my problems. That didn't work. I tried marijuana to solve my problems. That didn't work. Then I tried LSD and heroin to solve my problems. That didn't work. Finally, I became a revolutionary to solve my problems. That didn't work. He said, and besides, now I have a whole new set of problems. Finally, <laughs> the solution to man's problem, I think, is not more violence and just more things or more pharmaceuticals, but it is the finding of a spiritual purpose in life, finding God. Well, yeah. You've been listening to On Campus, a non-sectarian, non-denominational public affairs presentation. For free printed transcripts, write to Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701, and ask for the booklet Questions University Students Ask. It deals with such issues as science versus religion. How might a person define God? And to what extent is religion relevant in a scientific technological age? The title of that free booklet, once again, Questions University Students Ask. The mailing address, Box 347, Berkeley, California, 94701. I've also written Finding God, Getting to Know God, and Growing Spiritually about the processes of inward discovery, the new power and purposeful resource inherent in living by faith. And another free piece of literature is Freedom from Fear. The mailing address box 347, Berkeley, California. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international network of stations, let me spell out that mailing address once again, box 347, Berkeley, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 94701, USA. When you write, please send us the call letters of the radio station over which you heard this international broadcast. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley, reminding you to tune in again next time over this same station for On Campus. And may God's will be done by you. Good day.